just wanted to do a short video on how to propagate cacti. Now you can grow them from seeds, but they take forever. And the quickest way to do it is actually by removing the pups. So I have a Mammillaria spinosissima here, and I have a couple of, I think they're Arizona snowcaps. There we go. And these are really quick to propagate. As you can see, there's actually a couple that have dropped off there and they've even started to grow little tiny roots already. So I'll just put that one on top and we'll talk about that. We've also got an Echinopsis subdenudata. Let me see, var compacta. So this one's got lots of babies around it as well. You may have seen this one in one of my other um, plant haul videos. And so we're going to remove some of the pups. When we take them off, we'll let them dry out for a day or so. And then I'll be putting them onto just some dry soil, or you could even just put them on sand and just leave them there. They don't have roots, so they don't need any water to, until they grow any roots. So it'll probably take at least a good couple of weeks or so to grow some roots. Um, it is autumn in Australia, so whether it takes longer in autumn or not, I'm not really sure. Um, there's also this one here, which is a Parodia. So Parodia scopa vas blendens. And this one's got lots of babies too. Now these tiny ones at the top, you can see next to my finger, I don't want to get too close before I get prickled. I won't be removing those because they're so tiny, but I'll bring you a little bit closer and I'll show you how easy it is. Now you can use just a piece of paper and I might show you how to do that. Or I've got just some cheap kitchen tongs, which I got from a thrift store or an op shop. And they're actually quite good for grabbing them too. So if you've got some spare kitchen tongs or you get some from a thrift store or an op shop, you can use those. But I will also show you how to use just a piece of thick paper to remove them so that you don't get prickled. So I'll bring you closer and let's remove some babies and do some propagating. Okay, let's start with the mammillaria. So the first thing I've, oh, I was thinking I might take it out of the pot. It's got lots of babies here, but they're tiny. So I think what we'll do is we will just remove this big one here. I'm going to try and do it whilst it's still in the pot. I'll see, I'll see how we go. So remember I said you could use a piece of paper or card. So thin card is probably better, but I've just got a piece of paper. So I'm going to fold it a couple of times. <laughs> you'll know if this goes wrong because you'll hear me yelp when I go to pick it up. It's not too bad, this one. It is It is a little bit spiky, but it's not too bad. So um, I might just fold it in half so that it's the right size. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the big one with the tongs and I'm going to grab this one with now you could use gloves too but I find that sometimes the prickles go into the gloves and still spike you so what we're going to do is we're just going to do a little gentle twisting motion okay <laughs> doesn't look gentle at all does it so I just might even um, some actually need you to use a knife on them so we're just twisting it. I'm grabbing it with the paper and twisting it. It actually looks like it's two separate plants here anyway. So what I might do is take it out of the pot. So give it a little bit of a squeeze and take it out of the pot. It's uh, having trouble coming out, but I think it's because there's two separate plants. So it's actually good that you see this because <laughs> Sometimes when you watch people in videos, and especially on YouTube, everything goes properly and goes right, but it, in real life it doesn't, does it? There's often mistakes. So I'm actually snapping it down there. So hopefully you got to see that. And I'm just going to gently take it off. It's not really gentle at all, is it? So this guy here has ended up with most of the roots and that's okay. And those babies there, I'm just going to leave those to get a bit bigger. And this one's still got little babies too. I, I could probably remove these ones. They're not too bad. I have had success with them fairly small like that. So I might take a couple of those off. I've got things falling all over the place. There we go. So there's one, okay, one tiny little baby there and this one here. And then the little tiny, oh, it is a little bit prickly when you grab it the wrong way. <laughs> so there's another one there. And so the little teeny tiny ones right there, and there's one around here, we're just going to leave those. And so I will just leave these. In fact, I will leave them to recover because that was pretty traumatic. I, uh, I wouldn't have liked to have my babies removed by it like that. 
So I will leave those for a couple of days before I actually do, oh, before I replant them. I'll put these ones in two separate pots. So that's the first one done. Okay, so we'll move this out of the way. Now, the Arizona snowcap cactus, these guys fall off so easily. In fact, when you pick them up in the shop, they often will fall off. You've only got to touch them and sometimes they will. Watch this. <laughs> Probably won't now that I've said that. But see that? Just, I don't know if you saw that or not, but I just sort of moved it a little bit. So I'll put this over here. But they just, they fall off so easily. See that? Just knock it and it falls off. In fact, these could probably even just stay in the pot because if I'm not going to be watering it, and as long as I have those, see that little end there, right, the bottom of it, as long as I have that bit down, they're probably okay in the pot. I'll think about whether I want to put them into their own pot or not, but I'll leave them there for the moment. They might need to go into some soil just so that I can plant them properly. But let's remove a couple more. Like I said, these ones are really easy. They don't hang on like that mammalaria did. Look at that. They're just coming off on their own. Just knock them. And so that's the Arizona snowcap. They're very easy to propagate. So I'll just take the babies down. Like I said, put them into dry soil or sand and just, oh, spider there. Okay, we leave the little spider, the friend there. We'll put them back outside so that he can go his merry way. But look how easily they've just come off. With our other one here, I suspect we'll have exactly the same thing. You know, this one's already off. That one's come off already on its own. We'll set that aside. And they just come off really easily. So there's another one. And it's a good one. It's snapped off beautifully. They don't leave anything behind. Oh, I think that one was already detaching itself as well. So really easy. And all of a sudden, instead of one plant, and this is what I look for when I buy cacti as well. If I can get two plants or one plant with lots and lots of babies for the same price as one that's just a single plant, I will go for the double plant or the one with all the babies every time because you end up getting, you know, like I've taken off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So that had 11 babies, okay? And sometimes if you're really lucky, they might already have roots starting. So there we go. So that's the Arizona snowcap, 11 babies. And it looks very lonely now, but that's quite pretty too. So that one will go back outside. It'll take a day or so. I wouldn't be watering that whilst it had open wounds. Although it's really interesting. When you look at the trunk, you can't even tell where those babies have come from. Like you can't even tell. I'm looking there and I can't see any little scars. There you go. So it's on its lonesome. All right, this one, I'm not sure how this one will go. This is the Echinopsis. And so it's got lots of babies, but a lot of them are quite small. So I actually don't think I'll remove all of them. But let's have a look and see, just using the tongs. The rubber ends on them are really not great. Now that one has actually got roots. Can you see that? I'll make sure that you can focus in on that. Hopefully you can see. So that one's actually got a couple of roots. So put that one into dry soil. I'll put them separate over here so that now I will put, uh, I'll be doing a tag for these to say what type of cactus they are with the babies. So there's another one. Just snap it down. That one's got roots as well. So you can see that one there. Hopefully you can focus in on that. But that one's got roots as well. I'll put that one over there as well. So they're a nice size to grow. These ones here are probably a little bit too small. Um, unless they've got roots too, they might be okay. So that one there's come off easily. You can see the little nodes where the roots are wanting to grow there. So put that one aside and we'll just remove a couple more just to show you how easy it is, especially once you get going, it's quite easy to remove them. So there's another one there. And the other ones are fairly small. That one's not a bad size. Let's take that one. That one's got a little root starting there. So if you have a look there. Okay, put that one over there. And it's actually good to have the rubber tips, even though it's harder to grip. You're not going to damage them. This one actually looks like it's got 
a little root starting as well. Yep, so that one's already started to root on its own. There we go. Okay, so you can see the bare stem there, but the rest of them are too small. So I'm going to leave the rest of them until they get a little bit bigger. But I think I'll put this little guy, oh, maybe that one there, but I think I'll put this little guy into um, a bigger pot. Now that one's actually got a nice root system there already. Okay, so that's all we'll do for the Echinopsis. And the last one we're going to do was that big one. All right, let's put that over there. And this one was the Parodia, Parodia Scopa Vast Splendens. Now, this is a pretty big size plant, and it's got some nice size pups there. It actually looks like it might have a seed pod there. I'm not sure if that's what that is or not. It looks like a seed pod. I'll have to open that and see if it's got any seeds in it. So I'll set that aside, put that over here with my little piece of paper. There's another one there too. So um, I actually think, oh, there's more. So I'll take these off. I feel like they might be seed pods. Oh, something went bursting off then. So I will remove those and I'll have a look and see what's inside, see if there's any seeds in there. So there's another one there. And so these would have been where the flowers were. And I didn't get to see the flowers, but if it's pollinated, then where the flowers are, the flowers die and it'll leave seed pods in its place. And they're coming off fairly easily and they're nice and dry. So you wouldn't re you wouldn't take off seed pods if they weren't dry. You've got to wait till they dry out. So there you go. So I think that's what they are. There's another one there. So can you see that there? Try and remove that one as well. I'm glad I've got the tongs because this one's pretty prickly. Let's see if I can get that last seed pod off, if that's what it is. I feel like it probably is. <laughs> Easier said than done. All right, so it's sort of coming off into in bits. <laughs> there we go. We got it. All right, put that down there. So let's take some of these babies off. So this one's a nice size down here. So once again, we're just twisting and snapping. Okay, so there's that one there. I might put these separate. Okay, so some of these are just a really good size. Like I said, some of them could probably go in the pot, but it's probably better to put them on their own. So that was a nicely removed one too. There's another one down there. I'm hoping you're able to see this. You might have missed that one. There's another one there that's a nice size because we don't want to just take them all off if they're not quite big enough. They've got to have enough moisture in them to be able to support it whilst it's developing roots. All right, there's another one there. That one does not want to come off. I don't want to damage it either. <laughs> oh, all right, got that one off. So as you can see, this one's got lots and lots of babies. There's another one there that's a nice size. So just bend and snap. <laughs> it reminds you of a movie. <laughs> All right, another one there that's a nice size. Once again, bend and snap. So I am trying to be gentle with these. I know it probably doesn't look like I am. And if they didn't want to come, I would just leave them. But they do tend to just snap pretty easily. So there's another one there. These ones don't already have roots like what some of the other ones do. So there's another one that's a good size there. So let's get you in so you can see what I'm doing. So just snap it off very gently. There's another one. I don't think we'll take a whole lot more off because... They're fairly small. So there's another, that one's probably big enough to come off. There, there's another one. And there's one down there. I'll turn it around so that you can see properly. So there's that one there. And we just snap it off, just nice and gently. That's it, beautiful. All right, the other ones look fairly small. So I think we might just leave those on doesn't have quite as many babies as what it did. Now, as you can see, there are some little um, open wounds there. 
so you would not water this i mean it doesn't need water anyway because it's autumn and um, it's not the heat but you can see those little bits where it's actually snapped off so we need to let them callous off and dry out before we go giving it a drink anyway that's all there is to know about removing pups with cacti i hope you enjoyed this uh, video. I've got cacti and mess all over the place. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, then please subscribe and maybe do a thumbs up. And when I get a chance to put some of these into a nice little cactus garden, I will bring you along for the ride. So I'll talk to you soon. Bye. I thought you might like to see what I ended up with too. So here are all the babies that I removed apart from the ones that I left in the pot with the mums so i will be making labels for these and putting them onto some dry soil or sand and seeing how they go and the big mammalarigus with the big long spines they'll be going into their own clay pots and hopefully be able to create more babies so anyway i will see you next time bye